welcome welcome we've got a roller coaster of a custom today and it is a doozy i decided to try making my mini me doll she can be a host for these doll custom episodes and i was excited to see how i do let's begin To start off as a base, I have this Apple White Ever After High doll that I think will work perfectly. With a few details, I can make her look like me. The Apple White I have is missing her hands, so to fix that we'll be borrowing a few. Now it's time to take off that head. The rounded heads are growing on me, but I still like the face molds from Monster High a little bit more. So I thought about what I could do to change the face shape. I have more cheekbones than a typical Apple White doll, but I do want to save time by not changing the head. So I thought about what I could do to change the face shape. Dura Lee's channel came to my attention again with her chin molding techniques. She seriously has this down to a formula, so go and watch her videos for actual information. I'm going to gloss over it here, but the basics of it are to soften the head with 100% acetone, let the doll dry for 24 hours, and then set the face into a more angled shape using foam and pressure. The doll needs to be on the body for this so that the neck stays in the right shape to still fit the body after the head completely rehardens. After five days of this, we removed the head shaping materials. The effect looks really severe at this point, but after it relaxes into its new shape, it was looking really good. I like how the head is more oval now, which is what I was aiming for. The way I style my hair is different than how the doll was rooted, so I'll have to add hair to the part to keep the scalp from showing. I had learned that messing with the head before shrinking could cause damage, so I waited to root the doll until after the head shrinking and shaping. Now that the shape is good, we get some hot water on the neck, and... You know how every doll artist says to wait until the head is nice and squishy before trying to remove the head? Every doll artist says this. I panicked in the moment and made the situation much, much worse and was left with an unusable neck. Not one to give up easily, I brainstormed how I could reconstruct the neck using epoxy sculpt to try and glue the pieces back together and give it a little extra support. I tried to keep the alterations to a minimum so the head would still fit. Drying and sanding later, we had this. Since this was the whole reason I had removed the head in the first place, I rerooted the head and darkened the roots of the hair with brown pastels before washing it thoroughly. Here, I can restyle it without seeing the scalp, so yay! Success! Now, being extra careful to soften the head properly this time, I put the head and body back together. It was at this time that I started eyeing my dolls to go all Dr. Frankenstein and steal a neck from one of them. Fortunately, I found my other Ever After High dolls first and took a moment to reassess. While I had been planning to use Apple's body, there were other bases I could still use that would fit the skin tone I was aiming for, without giving me more work. I think this is the Red Queen and she was the next pale skin tone I had in this body type. 
This time, I sanded the head's neck hole to make sure the fit would be smooth and waited very patiently until the head was as soft as it could be before doing any head pulling. Now that mini laurel is on a body again, it's time to get serious about the details. I made a mistake by not making sure the face was properly clean before I started adding the pastel and the MSC. I noticed smudging on the second layer and thought to try and remove the blush on the first and make sure the doll was clean before continuing. But I didn't want to take off the whole face and only remove the dirty section. This left a discolored line on the forehead. But we can just hide that with hair, so... With everything that had happened with the neck, I was hesitant to start the face. But we can't let the fear of failure stop us. I used a light yellow-brown to sketch the eyes and get to work putting the rough details in. It was a personal goal of mine to get my dimples on the doll in a way that looked natural, so focusing on those got me in the zone. My eyes are hazel, and I found that it's hard to color hazel eyes without being too green or too brown. Finding that balance was a fun challenge, and I forgot about being nervous as I continued. Getting my tattoos on was the next step. Right now, I have two. One on my wrist, and one on my underarm. I was particularly finicky about my braille underarm tattoo. Putting the tots clearly as close as I could manage on the very tiny arm space was not ideal but I did all right. Back to the face, a few more details with the acrylic paint, some gloss varnish, and she's done. Wait a minute, she's not wearing any clothes. This is not YouTube appropriate. Before all this began, I made this cotton shirt and denim shorts. To complete her outfit, I wanted to make sneakers like Ayako from Doll Eightful's channel. They are so adorable, and this would be my first time making doll shoes. Ahem. The details for the shoes are in Delightful's video, so I'll show you the quick version here. I cut and sew the shapes, turn them inside out, and shape my Sculpey clay into the shapes I need. Like just about everything else in this video, things did not go as planned. I couldn't get the shape for the foot and toes right the first two times I tried. I made it too cramped both times I tried this and the, they cracked right open again when I was fitting the shoes. Finally, I got tired of it and made the biggest, roomiest black sneakers that I could and glued the heck out of it. Now she's ready for her entrance. I came close to just calling it quits and moving on to a different doll, but I'm glad I stuck with it. Mini Laurel may be imperfect, but so am I. Making her taught me a lot of things and showed me I can still succeed even when I mess up. If there's one thing I want to say, it's always let the head soften, please. Don't be like me. Learn from my mistakes. And today is the best day to start a project. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below what you thought of the video. Have you ever had a project go off the rails like this one? See you again soon.